Hey guys, and welcome back to Wonder Walkers. Today we are going to be doing a Photoshop tutorial, which is a little bit different for our channel. And it's just going to be me, Kaylee, because Dan is at work today currently. So that's okay. Sometimes we might do some videos where it's just either one of us filming the video, uh, depending on our schedules. But today I really wanted to take you through a Photoshop tutorial because we haven't done one of these on our channel yet. And as some of you guys might know, I do actually have my own channel where I do a lot of Photoshop tutorials and lots of different stuff like that. So I wanted to bring a little bit of that over here today and I wanted to show you guys how you can achieve a film effect in your photographs particularly within your travel photographs. I've done a similar video like this on my channel where I went into the details of doing this on a portrait photo but today's going to be a little bit different because I think usually with uh, landscape and travel photography you can push it a little bit further in terms of your coloring and effects. So today we're going to be starting off with this photo here of Dan and I'm going to show you guys how to get a film effect in this particular photo and how you can translate that over to your other travel photos at home. So I think the main thing with achieving a film effect in your photographs is that you really want to capture that film like grain and you really want to capture the different colored effects that can kind of happen with film photography in particular. And I'm going to show you a couple of techniques of doing that today. So first off, I really like to add a curves adjustment layer down here in the bottom right corner. And the way we're going to adjust this is by moving this line up and down into more of an S curve. That's going to make the photo appear a little bit more vintage, a little bit more aged, and it's going to bring the highlights down and the shadows up a little bit. So I'm going to show you guys what exactly I mean by this. And I'm going to bring this line up first off. So that's actually going to make the image a little bit brighter when we do that. So I want to move it just over here to the middle. I don't want to make it too bright because this is going to really lose a lot of detail, which is okay for this kind of effect, but I usually like to try and keep as much detail as possible. I'm then going to make another pointer down here on the curves adjustment layer, and then I'm going to bring this down a little bit just to bring the contrast back a bit. But now I'm going to move this little point here up, and this is actually going to bring the shadows up in the photo. You can see by doing that, it really brings those shadows up and it's not a true black. So I'm going to just move that up a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing at the other end now with this point. I'm going to bring this one down a bit. And this is going to bring the highlights down. It's just going to make the image look a little bit more flatter, which is sometimes the effect that film photos can have. So I'm just going to adjust these just a little bit. We don't want too much contrast. You can also bring... If you feel that there's too much contrast, you can bring this middle part up a little bit too and just move the shadows up even further if you wanted to. Okay, so turning on and off that layer, you can see that's already made a difference with kind of getting that film slash aged photo effect. Now we're going to move on to coloring and coloring is really the fun part with this because you can let your imagination go wild. There are lots of different color combinations you can use to make your photos appear like they were taken on film. You can go for a more retro look, which can involve using a lot more stronger and saturated colors, or you can use something that looks a lot more faded. So I want to do something that looks a little bit more faded today, but still add a little bit more interest to the photo. So one of my favorite color combinations uh, to achieve a film effect is by using a yellow first off. So I'm going to go up to solid color in the adjustment layers. And we're going to select a yellow color. So just anywhere here should be fine. And I'm just going to pick probably a color like that. Maybe a little bit warmer and press OK. Now we're going to use the blending modes to help blend this color onto the photograph. So the way I like to do this when I'm trying to make my image appear a little bit more film-like is I like to use the darken or multiply options here. So for now, I'm gonna just choose darken because this is gonna fill in all of the lightest parts of the image, all of the highlights. And we're going to bring the opacity right down to probably around say 20% and I'll show you guys what that's done. I'm going to click that on and off. You can see it's really warmed the photo a little bit, but also given it that little bit more of an aged effect with the yellow in the highlights of the image. Now we might have to tweak these as we go along, just depending on how the photo is looking. But the next color in the combination that I usually like to use for this sort of style of photographs is going to be kind of like a greeny blue color. So I'm going to go up to solid color again. And we're adding another solid color adjustment layer, but this time we're going to kind of move 
the coloring into this kind of area, more of like a green color, and then pressing OK. We're going to go back to the blending modes again. And this time we're going to fill in the shadows of the image with this color. So we're not going to use multiply and darken because that's really filling in a lot of the highlights. We're going to use lighten for this. You can see that some of these will make the colors appear in some of the darker areas of the image and sort of fill in that area. So I want to use lighten because it's filling in the shadows and it's going to create that real retro effect that we want. So now I'm going to bring down the opacity right down to about 16%. So I'll just turn that on and off and you can see that's given it that little bit more of a fill in the shadows. You can see there's a little bit more of a green tint there. And this can often appear with a lot of film photographs or older film photographs. So this is the color combination that I've just picked so far. I'm going to add to this in just a second, but turning these layers off, you can see what a difference that's made just by adding a little bit more of a color grade there. We're gonna add one more color into the color combination now. And this is sometimes more of an optional thing if you just want that little bit more of interest in the color grade. So usually I'll pick like a pink color this time or a pinkish reddish color combination there. And press OK. Now I'm going to go back to the blending modes again. And we're going to go to Linear Dodge Add. So this isn't actually a blending mode that I would use very often, but I feel like it works quite good for the mid-tones and also some of the shadowed areas again. But we're adding more of a pink color and we're just going to move the opacity right down. I'm going to keep moving that down, right down. This is just a really small bit of interest that we're adding here. And you can see that that's kind of filled in some of the mid-tones around the shadows and some of the shadows as well. So you can see that that's just added a little bit more lightness to the image and given it an extra level of coloring there. So that's usually the color combination I like to use for a lot of my retro shots, but there are so many different color combinations that you can use and you are not restricted to these colors alone. Now to tweak some of these colors a little bit further, we're going to bring up a selective color adjustment layer now. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to just adjust some of these sliders and we're going to tweak it just to refine the coloring a little bit more in certain areas. So first off, I feel like with the yellows in the overall image and particularly with Dan's shirt in this image, I just want to bring them down a little bit. So we're just going to move them down maybe a bit to about minus 10. And then we're going to move on to the whites. And we're just going to play around with some of the sliders here. Just a little bit more blue in the sky, a little bit less magenta, and a little bit less yellow than I think what we've already got at the moment. And then going to neutrals, this will also really uh, change the style of your color grade. So I'm not going to do too much here, but I'm just going to see what a couple of these sliders might look like if, if we go a few steps either side. I'm just going to do some basic tweaking here. This is kind of more of an optional extra just to refine the image. But I'm pretty happy with that color grade overall at the moment. I think it's got a bit of interest in it and I think it's definitely getting a bit of a mood. So now I'm going to move on to desaturating the colors a little bit more. So now we're going to bring up a vibrance adjustment layer. And to give it that really nice film effect, we're just going to desaturate the image a little bit. Well, just remove some of the vibrance essentially. So I'm going to move it down to maybe about minus eight. And you can see that's just kind of removed a little bit more of the saturation around the edges and things like that. I'm going to give you guys a, just a before and after here to see what we've done so far. So that is the before and this is the current after. But there is a finishing touch that we're going to do to this image and that is going to be adding the grain. Of course, with a lot of film photographs, uh, a lot of the appeal is the grain that it does produce as well. So we are going to kind of replicate that in this image. And the way we're going to do that is by duplicating the background layer. So I usually just drag that into the new layer button. Then we're going to go filter, noise, add noise. And I like to make my noise quite busy, <laughs> essentially because we're going to tweak it further, but I usually have monochromatic selected because if monochromatic's not selected, you do tend to have the colored noise like that, but I just want to keep it monochromatic for this purpose. We're going to select Gaussian and I've got mine set at a nearly 14% amount. So I'm just going to leave it as that for now. And then I'm going to go to filter, 
blur, Gaussian blur. And for the purpose of this image, I'm going to leave it at about two pixels to really soften a lot of that grain because we want it to be a really nice soft effect that we're getting. So I'm going to press OK. And then we're going to zoom in to see how this is looking. So it's definitely looking quite grainy, which is what we want. And now we're going to just adjust the opacity a little bit just to kind of make sure we're not going too far with it. So I think around 70% for this photo is fine. And I'm going to take a final snapshot now. So there you have it. That is the final look that we're going for today. And I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I want to do a before and after now, a full before and after. So this is the before image and this is the after image. So you can see with these adjustment layers that we've really had them work in conjunction with each other to create that really nice film effect. Uh, there's lots of different ways that you can do this to your photos, but this is just one of my personal favorite workflows for giving your travel and landscape photos that film effect overall. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this one on our channel, please let us know in the comment section below. And please comment down any tutorials that you would like to see in future. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.